So this question is a system of inequalities. Right? So you, I'm sure you've seen system of equations where we use substitution or elimination. On the SAT, more than likely, you'll be using the process of elimination to solve a system of equations. On this test, however, for a system of inequalities, usually the way to go about this is to graph. Right? So I'm going to get my graph set up here. Um, the question says, which ordered pair xy is a solution to the given system of inequalities in the xy plane? So again, there's another hint, right? In the xy plane is a hint that I need to graph. So I'm going to start by graphing this first inequality. It has a y-intercept of positive 1. So that's 1. I'll just make that 2, 3, 4, 5. The idea is that you want to try to make your spacing as even as possible. Right? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. So I'm sure that's not perfect, but it should be good enough for what we're doing. So y-intercept of positive 1. Slope is negative. So again, I'm getting this from y equals mx plus b. Right? That's the relationship here. So in this case, 1 is my b value, so my y-intercept. And negative 3 is like my m value, my slope. So if I go down 3 units from positive 1, I end up at negative 3. 2 on the y-axis, I go over 1, so I have a point right here. And then I have this dashed line through those points. Just do the best I can to make that straight. And because it's less than, I shade below it, so I kind of shade this way. Now for this inequality, I also have a y-intercept of positive 1, so that's going to still be in the same place. The slope, however, is negative 1 half, so now I just go down 1 to the right twice, which puts me here. So that's positive 2 on the x-axis, and now my shaded line, or my dashed line, looks like this. And it's also less than, so I'm also going to shade below, but I'm going to shade in a different direction so we can see where things overlap. All right, so now I'm going to use a different color just to outline where the overlap is. All right, so all of this represents solutions to this system of inequalities. Now, when I go back to my answer choices, negative 2, comma 3. Well, where is negative 2, comma 3 on my graph? Um, let me just erase a little bit of this so we can see it. Where is negative 2, comma 3? So that's negative 1. This is negative 2. This is 3 here. Negative 2, comma 3 is way up here, right? It's not in the overlap area, so A is gone. Choice B, where is 1, comma 2? Right? So this is 1. 2 is here, so 1, 2 is up there. That's also not in the overlap area. So b is gone. 0, 2 would be right here. So you see the value of like having these points on your graph so you can see exactly where they are. That's also not in the overlap area, so it's gone. And then negative 1, 1, well, that looks like that would be like exactly right there, which is definitely inside of this overlap area. So that makes choice D the best answer. Um, also of note here is that we could have solved this non-graphically, non-visually through um, plugging in answers, right? So the strategy plug in answers. And all that would mean is, for instance, if I'm testing out choice D, that tells me that X equals negative 1 and Y equals positive 1. I can go to each of my inequalities and replace, right, replace Y with positive 1, replace X with negative 1. Three, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, and it is true that 1 is less than 4, so that's good. Same thing for this bottom one. Replace y with positive 1. Replace x with negative 1. Negative 1 half times negative 1 is positive 1 half. Positive 1 half plus 1 is 1 and a half, and it is true that 1 is less than 1.5 or 1 and a half. So that also makes that true. So that would be another reason or another way, in fact, a faster way, to figure out that choice D is correct. And just to prove to you that it works for, you know, the other answers, if I try choice B, for instance, where X equals 1 and Y equals 2, then technically these things should not work. And let me just prove that to you really quickly. Um, so when I plug in X, when I plug in Y equals 2 and X equals 1, again, negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. All right, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And it is not true, 
right? It is not true that 2 is less than negative 2. So even without trying the second one, automatically that would tell us that choice B is gone. So in essence, if you plugged in each of these for X and Y for each of your options, A, B, and C would not work for one, at least for at least one of the inequalities, but choice D would be the only answer that does work for both inequalities when you plug in the answers.